Hello everybody, this is Karen Watson, your Creative Memories and Forever consultant. I'm sorry about the moving this, but I did the video in its entirety and then realized that I didn't have you in landscape and so you would have had to crick your neck looking at it from the side. Um, so anyway, hope I didn't blind you there. Thank you so much for clicking on this and watching. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is the Creative Memories 3-in-1 Bevel Tag Maker. I just, I saw an idea that I thought was just so fabulous. It put me over the edge. I just said, I have to have this. So I wanted to show you some different things that you can use. And um, you might be thinking, I have a tag maker. This was the one that Creative Memories brought out a number of years ago. And that was my thought. I have a tag maker. I don't need another one. But just to show you a little bit of the differences... With this one, you can make one size and one size only. And it didn't have a hole at the top. And if you have a hole puncher, then great. You know, that's not a big deal. Um, but if you don't, then, you know, you got to come up with some way to make a hole. And if you're just using this on a scrapbook page, it really doesn't matter, right? Um, you can just draw one if you needed to. But if you want to make an actual gift tag, it's nice to have the holes. So this is something that you can use in your scrapbooks, but I'm going to show you a few things in a couple minutes that you can do for um, gifts. You know, um, the one thing that I'm going to finish with is a gift card holder, which I just, that's the idea that put me over the edge. By the way, if you decide you like this and you want it, go to my website at creativememories.com forward slash user. U-S-E-R forward slash crop with me all spelled out and it's under punches you go to shop punches and then you'll find this with all the rest of the punches so a couple things that are unique about this one compared to the old one is it does make that hole at the top which is very very helpful but the thing that is really cool is you can make three widths so it makes one inch two inch and two and a half inch and if you look closely I'm sitting so I don't know what you're seeing Okay, so if you're looking closely, here's your one inch width, here's your two, here's your two and a half. So it depends on how wide you cut your paper. So you cut your paper, you push it all the way to the back, and it's not going to go any further than the back. You punch it, boom, you've got it. So one inch, two inch, two and a half. So that's what it looks like. I trimmed off these two, but I left this one 12 inches. And the reason being, I wanted to point out, you know, we've talked about this at some of our crops, how you can take some of our other punches, punch the ends off, and have a unique border. You know, put some printed paper in the middle, uh, put some stickers, put uh, some embellishments, you know, overlap your photos over it. No big deal about touching, you know, as long as you've got photo safe paper. But you, it's as long or as short as you want it to be. So I think for most borders, I would go with the two inches. Two and a half is getting kind of wide, but you know, it really depends on you. It depends on your page. It depends on the layout. So, you know, have fun with that. Um, but they're, tags, they make some really, really cute pages. So it was made to go with your scrapbooking, but we're going to talk about some other things now. So, um, journal box is another thing that you can do. And I don't know if you know, but Creative Memories does have ruled paper. They did have white. I looked at the website today. I'm not seeing white, so I don't know if that's discontinued or or not. But they have it in Natural and um, Spargo right now. Used to make it in black years ago. Um, but the old was 10 by 12 inches, and that's what I have in stock right now. And I was kind of hoarding it because we didn't have it with the new company, and I use these a lot. Um, but now they came out with a 12 by 12, which is really cool. And the lines go all the way to the edge. So you can make your journal boxes anywhere on the piece of paper. As big, as wide, as narrow, as tall, as short as you want it. Um, so I had a bunch of these scraps left over because I love using this. Um, I've done some where it's, you know, the big oval that takes the entire page. or the you know Now we've got that jumbo circle. I would be using that one with a custom cutting system. And, you know, it makes a great page where everything on there is journaling. I've done some where it was a 12 inch tall, narrow journal box. And somebody was talking about making a, um, a clipboard. 
So they took the platinum shimmer paper, it has kind of a metallic look as you can see when I change it in the light, cut off the top, and then just put a piece of this ruled paper over it. Now it looks like a clipboard with some paper on it. And I purposely did not cut this off because you don't have to, you know, a, a clipboard would probably end maybe about here. But what if you had more to say? You know, it's not a very wide journal box, so you may need more space. So, you know, do your writing first, then cut off your paper in an area, that, you know, give it a little bit of a, a width below your writing, and then your base a little bit longer than that. But I thought that was really cute to make a journal box out of that. Um, but the thing that really put me over the edge was this idea of making a gift card holder with it. Isn't that cute? So I purposely did one that was a little bit more of a masculine paper here. And I have a lot of leftover stickers and embellishments from Croptoberfest. So I used the Thankful For You and put that on there. And I could have done something with, you know, the flowers or, you know, friends are the sunshine of life. Uh, it's a great way to use up your scraps of paper. We all have a lot of paper, right? That's the thing that I hear the most from people. I got so much paper. And then they keep coming out with such cute stuff. I want all of it. Well, this is a great way to use up some of your older stuff. And especially if it's just not a lot, a big size paper to use on your page. But I just thought that was such a cute idea. Put a ribbon on the top and it really makes it cute. Um, I did this one in the last video. Like I said, I, I ended up um, <laughs> doing it the wrong direction. Um, lesson learned on this one. I had a really big um, print that I had on the inside. I wanted this to be the side of the paper that was a little bit less busy because I just didn't want things to get lost on that paper. But what I've learned is it's probably just too big a, a print. So I think I would go with a smaller print next time. But you can see how cute that is. You can take your foam squares and pop that off even more, give it a real dimensional look. If this is gonna be on a gift card holder or a, a tag, it doesn't matter how thick it is. You know, on your pages, I don't think you want your pages to be too thick. So, you know, one foam square is sufficient, I think, on a, a regular page, but you know, you don't want to double them up, which is something you could do here if you want to get a lot of dimension. But um, you know, one of the things my friend who showed me how to do this is really, really good at is using ribbons. And unfortunately, I don't have any ribbons on hand. The paper ribbon or the the material ribbon she has she went to michael's and she gets on the roll uh the plaid in every color and you know this is my personal gift card that somebody gave me for my birthday and i didn't know how to use it now i know i'm gonna go get some of that because it's so stinking cute but it's probably what she uses is probably a little bit wider than this these are some reusable gift bags that someone else had given me and i thought you know they just did such a cute job with these. And, you know, even this, this is probably more the, the width of what she used. Um, I'm not really great with those kind of ribbons. So I tend to be the curly ribbon kind of gal. It's just easier for me. But pretend that this was a piece of the cloth ribbon. You just fold it in half, stick this through. Sorry, you have to use your imagination on this. And pull these through. And see how cute you can just imagine what that would look like with a cloth ribbon and with something like this I could always just you know do the curly part you know take my scissors and make it curly but I just think it looks so cute with her cloth that like I said this is how I'm gonna be spending my my money on my gift card so let me show you how to make this um, you know and, and one of the things to think about with gift with gift um, tags in general is you can make a bunch up in advance and um, have them ready. You know, a lot of times things come up at the last minute and, uh, you know, you got to have a gift really quick. Well, if you've got a bunch of gift tags already made or gift card holders, it makes it really, really easy to put something together really quick and easy. You know, and if you just took, um, you know, made a bunch of these, 
excuse me, just gift tags, period. Um, you can make some that are kind of whimsical for children. You can make things that are masculine, feminine, uh, birthday specific, Christmas specific, wedding, whatever. You could make all of it up in advance. Um, if you're not, if you're doing it at the moment, you're putting together a gift for somebody. What I would suggest is go ahead and leave the length on this. Just cut the top. You might say to so-and-so, have your embellishment or your sticker here. And then, you know, whatever you're, you know, from or, you know, happy birthday, we love you, whatever sentiment you want to put on there. When it's all said and done, then cut off the end. Because otherwise you're trying to squeeze into uh, the size that you started off with. So that's one of the advantages of not doing it ahead of time. But you could always make them ahead of time and leave the, the length on there. But you tie those onto, you can get just the plain colored uh, gift bags you know, like uh, your old sandwich bags, but it's, it's this pretty color and then it has the, the handles and just have this tied with that ribbon on it. Super duper cute because your decoration is going to be in your tag. It's going to be in the embellishments and the, um, the stickers that you use. And something to consider as well, you know, every time you come to an event like Croptoberfest, National Scrapbook Day, you get these things, little gift goodies. The leftovers on that would make the cutest tags. You know, this has leaves, it has the strawberries, it has little journal boxes, it has little words in it. Um, you know, the Croptoberfest stuff was so cute. And there's four on a page for the embellishments from Croptoberfest. Guys, it's $1.50. It really doesn't cost much at all. Um, so this is definitely something that, that, you know, you could use your leftovers with. Um, and you think about, I think these are all still available, but the botanical stuff, this is so pretty. This would be so pretty on your tags. They have some metallic stuff running through it. Those lines are metallic. They've got these little dots that you can put on there. The veins on the leaves is a metallic gold. You can layer, you know, here's where you can really do lots of layering with your foam squares and all the different pieces from the, uh, the flowers. But just such a pretty, pretty thing. Okay, I digress. I digress. So I'm going to show you how to make this and I'm going to put the instructions on um, my VIP page. If you're not a member, feel free to ask me to join. Um, it is for my active customers. So um, we asked a few questions to start off with, but the things that you are going to need to make this are your 12 inch trimmer your scoring blade, the punch, and I would suggest regular tape runner. If you have a glue stick, you have a glue pen, uh, make sure you, if you have a glue stick, just, you know, word of caution. Uh, my mother used a glue stick for some event where she was putting together, I think it was Valentine's cards, and they kept falling apart. She, it drove her crazy. So there's some glue sticks that are more adhesive than others you know they dry up and, and things fell off it drove her nuts so make sure you have a good adhesive because what you don't want especially if you're investing in a larger amount of money um, in your gift card you don't want it falling out so um, you want I wouldn't use the repositionable on this for that purpose not that it's not a permanent good adhesive but I think for the purposes of this you need something stronger like photo tape, if you still have that over, left over, or your regular tape runner. Anyway, um, so that's everything you need. It's really not a lot. And like I said, you can use a lot of leftover things with this. Um, okay, my paper. So this is some leftover paper I have from Croptoberfest. And what I wanna do is I want to cut a five and a half by four and a half piece of paper. So what I'm going to do, your five and a half mark is right here on the edge of your trimmer. So, you know, if you had a bigger piece of paper you needed to cut, you can always pull the arm out. But in, for this purpose, you really don't need to. So just cut it right there on the edge for five and a half. And then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to go to the four and a half inch mark. Oops. Get a little aggressive there with my paper and my ruler. I'm going to set this aside. Actually, no, I'm not going to set this aside. <laughs> um, I'm going to change the blade. 
So here's my straight inch blade. What I love about this new trimmer, and this is just one of many things I love about it, is the blade doesn't show anywhere. When I'm demonstrating, I have a very, very bad habit of cutting myself. I don't know if it's because I'm going too fast, if I'm distracted, if it's nerves, but I love that all I have to do is just pop that in there, click, boom, that's in there. So that's my scoring blade. So let me look at my notes. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put this widthwise, the longest, the five and a half inch down first. Put that up to the top and go to the one half inch mark, which is right here. So here's my inch, here's my half inch. Remember, this is a scoring blade. I'm not going to be cutting all the way through. You can get really aggressive and you can cut, but generally speaking, a scoring blade, it just makes it easier to fold it. Um, and then I want to go to the three inch mark. So here's my three inch mark here on my left, and I'm going to score that, okay? Now, before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to my regular blade, because if I don't do that, I'm gonna try cutting later and it's not gonna cut, and that will frustrate me. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside. So, let's see. Let me see, I think, I'm just trying to decide which I wanna show on the outside. Um, because it kind of depends on how busy something on the front's going to be. I don't know. I kind of like the, the decorative part. So I think I'm going to make the leaves on the outside. So I'm going to fold in my half inch. And what I want to do is I want to meet the side here with the folded edge. So now it should be, this should be a two and a half inch width, which is the full width of my trimmer my cutter, my punch, my punch. Um, and I'm, again, I'm thinking about this. Do I want to have, nah, I think I want it, I think I want it to go this way. So you can do what you want. I mean, this is, there's nothing hard and fast about this. Maybe the sizes, but other than that, you know, there's some options of things you can do. Okay. So I have my, let's see, I want to do it this way. So I have my folded edge here at the top on the right side. I'm going to stick this in my punch. You push it all the way to the back and it's not going to let you go any further. I mean, it, it stops where it stops and just punch it. So now I've got my punch, a little bit of debris. I'm going to get rid of that. Put my punch aside. And now let's see. I did this backwards earlier. So let me think. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So here is my half inch mark. This is the narrow one. So this is the long end. What I want to do is I want to cut this at an angle starting at this point. So on here, there are two lines, two black lines. The one on the left is where you're literally cutting. Um, so it doesn't matter how wide I, sh I should say how deep or how shallow you cut your angle. Personally, I think it's probably better if you cut it a little bit less, a little bit shallower, because here you go. When I glue it down, this is gonna be my gift card. So it would go in there like that. So, huh, look at that, almost identical. Um, sorry about that. Okay, um, so I guess I'm pretty consistent with how deep I make it, but if you make this super deep, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have that tendency for your card to kind of fall out, which obviously you don't want that to happen because you invested money in that gift card and you want them to actually get it. So what you wanna do is you want to adhere, let me think, yeah. So I want to, oh, let me remember. I've done this so many times, you would think this would be second nature. Yeah, I want this to be on the inside. So I'm going to adhere on that side and at the bottom of one of these, the bottom, because I want to seal the bottom. I don't want it to fall out. And I'm just going to fold that over. And there you go. Actually, you know what? I think the proper way would be to have it go around the outside. Isn't that funny? I'm showing you how to do this and I'm correcting myself as we go. But it works, it works this way, but I think, I think I would do that. This one, obviously I'm not gonna end up using. 
so I made a mistake. But I think, honestly, you want that wrapped around. Okay, so I take that back. The way that I did it was wrong the first time. I had it tucked in. So I want to have that going around the back, adhered on the bottom, so that, boom, I have a gift card holder. Now, if you're wondering why did I make this score, that gives you a little bit more depth. See how that opens it up a little bit more? So it's easier to put that in there. So the first one gave you something to fold, whereas this one gave you a little bit more of an opening. So like I said, you don't want that to fall out, so make sure you've got a good adhesive down here. Wrap this around, adhere it on the back, and again, you know, just play around with what embellishments you might have stickers. Um, this is why I was a little bit unsure whether I wanted to have the decoration on the outside because I don't want it to be so busy that you don't really see the embellishment. But, um, you know, I could, I don't think I would do that one, but fall memories. I don't know. I think I like those better for my scrapbooks. This one is just so open-ended. But, you know, again, with that botanical, you know, you can just imagine all the different things that you could do with with the different decorations, especially these pretty little dots. You know, they look like rhinestones. I love that. And this paper is gorgeous. I would definitely save that one for my scrapbook because I just love that circle. But, you know, there's just, all of these are double-sided paper. A lot of our, if not all of our, um, our uh, designer paper is double-sided. So you can have here dots on one side, flowers on another. Um, this has kind of, well, it has different kinds of flowers, but there's always, sometimes it's it's where it's a little bit more of a contrast. Like, I like these with a the contrast. Again, I think that's too big a, a decoration on the inside because it just kind of gets lost. But, you know, something that has a contrast, I think makes it look really nice. So you have something in the back, something in the front. Um, Anyway, I just thought those were the cutest ideas. And sorry about some of my oopses, but, um, you know, let me know if you've watched. That always encourages me to keep making videos. Let me know if there's anything that you want to learn more about. Um, you're welcome to email me at cropwithme at earthlink.net. Um, but uh, like, love my, my video, um, and just thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support and have a great day.